Always wanted to learn how to create a set of line patterns in Adobe Illustrator, but never knew exactly where to start. Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck since in this video I'm going to walk you through the entire process and show you how to design three different line patterns. I'm Andrew and you're watching the Envato Task Plus tutorial. Assuming you already have the software up and running, we're going to start by setting up a new web intended project file by heading over to File, New, or by using the Ctrl N keyboard shortcut and then setting the profile to web. Next, we're going to want to increase the number of artboards to 3, increasing the spacing to 200 pixels, and then set both the width and height to 400 pixels, and then hit OK. As soon as we finish setting up our new project file, we're going to position ourselves onto the first artboard, and then create a background for our first pattern variation using a 400 by 400 pixel square which will occur using 78B9FF, making sure to center align the shape afterwards. Next, we're going to set our color to white, and then using the pen tool, we're going to draw a diagonal line starting from the artboard's top left corner, and then going all the way down to its bottom right one, making sure to set the stroke's weight to 4 pixels. Adjust the shape of the line that we've just created by heading over to the effect, Distort and transform and applying a zigzag effect. Use an absolute size of 4 pixels, setting the ridges per segment to 15 and the points to smooth. With the resulting shape selected, we're going to add the bottom left lines by right clicking and then going to transform, move, where we'll want to enter a value of minus 8 pixels for the horizontal value field and 8 pixels for the vertical one making sure to press the copy button in order to create the first instance. Once we have our first copy, we're going to use the Ctrl D keyboard shortcut to duplicate the action until we've filled in the lower empty space. Add the top right lines by selecting the initial stroke again and then going through the exact same process, only this time use a value of 8 pixels for the horizontal field and minus 8 pixels for the vertical one, adding the remaining copies using the Ctrl D keyboard shortcut. Select and then group all of the stroke lines together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut and then mask them using a copy of the underlying background. Once you're done, make sure you select and group all of the current patterns composing shapes before moving on to the next one. As soon as we finish working on the first pattern variation, we can position ourselves onto the next artboard where we'll start working on our second one. Create a 20 by 20 pixel square which we'll call using FFE180 and then align to the artboard's bottom left corner, making sure to leave a gap of 2 pixels between their bottom edges. Adjust the shape by selecting its right anchor points using the direct selection tool and then pushing them to the bottom by a distance of 16 pixels by right clicking and then heading over to transform, move and entering the specified value within the vertical field. Give the resulting shape an outline by creating a copy which will then paste in front, changing its color to 191515 and then flipping its fill with its stroke using the Shift X keyboard shortcut. Set its weight to 4 pixels and its corner to round join, selecting and then grouping the two together afterwards. Create a copy of the shape that you've just grouped which will vertically reflect by right clicking and then heading over to Transform, Reflect, Vertical, positioning the adjusted shapes onto the right side so that the outlines overlap. Adjust the color of the copy's fill shape by setting it to FF8F83. Add the second row of shapes by selecting the ones that we have so far and then dragging them up while holding down the Shift key to keep a straight line and the Alt one in order to create a copy, making sure to flip their fill colors afterwards. Create the remaining rows using the click and drag method to add the first instances and then add the remaining duplicates using the Ctrl D keyboard shortcut, making sure to remove the last row. Once we have our first column, we can select and group all of its composing shapes together and then add the remaining ones using the click and drag method, making sure to mask them all afterwards using the 400 by 400 pixel square. 
We are now down to our third and last pattern variation, so assuming you've already positioned yourself onto the remaining artboard, let's jump straight into it. We're going to start by creating a 40 by 40 pixel square, which we'll call using FF, B685, and then position below the artboard's bottom left corner. Turn the square into a triangle by adding a new anchor point to the center of its bottom edge using the Add Anchor Point tool and then removing its bottom ones using the Delete Anchor Point tool. Give the resulting shape an outline by first creating a copy of it, which we'll paste in front, and then adjust by setting its color to 191515, and then flipping its fill with its stroke, making sure to set its weight to 4 pixels, and its corner to round join. Group the two shapes, and then create a copy, which will horizontally reflect by right clicking and then going to transform, reflect, horizontal, making sure to position it on top of the original so that their outlines overlap. Add the smaller details using 416 by 16 pixel circles, which will occur using A0, EF, D5, then give a 4 pixel thick outline, individually grouping and then positioning each of them to the center of the resulting rhombuses tips. With the shapes in place, select and group all of them together using the Ctrl G keyboard shortcut. Create a copy of the shape that we've just grouped, which will position onto the right side of the original, making sure to change the fill color of the triangles to FFE180. Add the remaining instances using the click and drag method in combination with the Ctrl D keyboard shortcut. Create the second row using a copy of the orange based decorative segment, which we'll then use to fill in the entire width of the artboard. Add the third row using a copy of the bottom one, which we'll then adjust by flipping the position of the yellow triangles. Finish off the pattern segment by adding the remaining rows using instances of the ones that we already have, making sure to group and then mask them all afterwards using a 400 by 400 pixel square. To turn any of the pattern segments into an illustrator pattern, all we have to do is select it and then go to Object, Pattern, Make which will bring up the Pattern Options window. Here we'll want to give it a custom name, set the tile type to Grid, and then make sure to check the Size Tile to Art option, leaving all the other settings as they are. Once we hit Done, our new pattern should now be available within the Swatches panel, which means that all we have to do in order to use it is set it as our fill color, and then simply start drawing using any of the available shape tools. That being said, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.